They are the lifelines of modern civilization, rivers at once majestic and powerful, powering towns with electricity. Connecting buyers and sellers. And supplying people with food and water. Now their past and future are at stake. Here in Arizona, the Colorado River is about 20% smaller than it was just 20 years ago. Here in Germany, the Rhine River, which carries goods to most of Europe, has reached five feet below normal levels. And here in China, the Yangtze River is now so dry, factories have been shut down and shipping has slowed. And experts here say they've never, never seen it this bad, bad. And, and it's, it's likely, likely to, to get, get worse. worse. Record-setting drought, forever changing nature's landscape. This is China's largest freshwater lake. It's normally 1,400 square miles, but drought has shrunken it to just a tenth of what it should be. I'm standing on Lake Powell. This is the nation's second largest reservoir. And just to give you a scope of the crisis, you go back two years ago, and where I'm standing right here, I'd be about 70 feet underwater. Is any of that accelerated by climate change? Absolutely. The warmer temperatures, uh, the lack of snowpack of this 22-year drought has made it so that uh, the water levels are just falling quickly and the lake is crashing. What you see behind me is the Glen Canyon Dam. Water from right here, Lake Powell, flows through the dam into the Colorado River, supplying water and power to 40 million people out west. So right now we're on top of the dam. We were given exclusive access to Glen Canyon Dam, where water levels at the dam are just 39 feet from dropping below hydropower generation. The ability to produce power is going down as the reservoir is going down. Right now, both Lake Powell and Mead are only about a quarter full and projected to drop even lower. 10 million tons of cargo move through the Rhine daily, from car parts to coal. But with water levels so low, ships have to carry less cargo for fear of getting stuck. We will not be able to carry that kind of huge volumes and tonnages in the future. This Ford plant in Germany has shipped new cars on the Rhine River for nearly a century. But low water over the summer months has created logistical challenges. We have to... Um, uh, load less cars, less vehicles on a boat than we do normally. For rice farmers here like Li De Hong, their livelihood and lives are now in danger. It's all dry. He's saying this is what it looks like when rice doesn't grow. It's all dry. The record drought in China has lasted more than two months. Nearby reservoirs, which normally feed these lands, are all depleted. So it's usually three or four feet deep. Ponds in this village are filled with mud. Any water that's left is unusable. I've planted here for 12 years, he says. I remember there was another year which dried for more than 80 days, but we still had water in those ponds. Adding this year, everything is lost. Life is so hard for us people, he says. But just as our modern lives are turned upside down, the hidden treasures of the past are now revealed. This pagoda is usually surrounded by water. Now the lake is gone, leaving this completely visible. Just last year, this rock formation would have been completely surrounded by water. And now you can walk right up to it. And in Germany, the drought uncovered so-called hunger stones. The oldest one from 1616 reads, if you see me, weep. Exceptional droughts have occurred in the past and been associated with periods of famine, widespread starvation. And now an urgent race to save the planet. In China, they're literally making it rain, shooting rockets into clouds. The projectiles release chemicals that trigger precipitation. The hope to save the autumn harvest, which accounts for most of the country's annual yield. The war in Ukraine has already created an energy crisis here in Europe. They're firing up old coal power plants in order to keep the lights on this winter. But the supplies for those power plants are often stuck at ports. And here in the United States, a solution seems ever so distant as states battle over conservation rights. What has to change for this to get better? 
we all need to conserve more. Every industry, every person, every city in this basin has to learn to do more with less. We're seeing more intense, more frequent heat waves happening all around the world. They're definitely going to continue and it's going to get worse for at least the next 30 years. Three rivers running out of water and out of time. Matt Bradley from the Rhine River. Steve Patterson along the Colorado River. Janice Mackey for air on the Yangtze River. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.